Dear friends, they have approved it. State lawmakers have announced millions of dollars in energy assistance for low to middle income families. Many households meet the eligibility requirements. And are currently able to apply for this relief, but there is a deadline to apply by, so I'll be going over everything that you need to know. So please make sure, friends, that you watch until the end of this video. Also, to say thank you for being part of this community, I will be announcing winners this coming Friday for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you would like to enter these weekly giveaway, friends. All you need to do is click and like several of my videos, and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on, friends, the greater your chances of winning these giveaways. Yesterday morning, Democrats and Republicans reached an important agreement to move forward on three bipartisan, underlined bipartisan appropriations bills: Milcon VA, Agriculture, Transportation, HUD. We'll begin voting on amendments as soon as this afternoon, and keep going through the rest of the week and into the next. It is my hope that with bipartisan cooperation, we can wrap up our work on these bipartisan appropriation bills sometime next week. And this will be the Senate working as it should, both parties cooperating, debating amendments, working through differences, without grinding the legislative process to a halt. Democrats promised our Republican colleagues that their voices would be heard, and we're making good on that promise. Forty amendments will be considered, many of them bipartisan, on issues ranging from telehealth funding for veterans, fixing infrastructure hit by natural disasters, to investments in rural America. We work closely with Republicans to put these appropriation bills together. If passed, the bills will make a huge difference for American farmers, for our infrastructure, for housing. And for our military bases and veterans, bipartisanship isn't easy. On the contrary, these days it's exceedingly difficult. But we're moving forward thanks to the good work of our appropriators, especially Chair Murray and Vice Chair Collins. They've set the tone from the start here in the Senate that bipartisanship should lead the way. It was true in the Appropriations Committee. I hope it remains true here on the floor. Because we're going to need bipartisanship in all that we do during this time of divided government, bipartisanship will be essential for passing these appropriation bills. Bipartisanship will be essential for keeping the government open in less than a month, and bipartisanship will be essential for passing the president's national security request. Today, U.S. Senator Joe Manchin, chairman of the Senate Energy and Natural Resources Committee, announced thirty-one million dollars from the low-income. Home Energy Assistance Program for the state of West Virginia. The program is funded through the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, and provides critical financial assistance to low-income Americans with energy costs that represent a disproportionate share of their household budgets. Senator Joe Manchin told reporters, "No West Virginian should have to choose between heating their homes this upcoming winter." And paying for necessities like food or medicine, the funding announced today, which is made possible in part through the bipartisan infrastructure law, will ensure the program can continue to assist low-income households in paying for their utilities, which will cut costs for families. The program helps low-income households pay home heating and cooling bills, prevent energy shutoffs, restore services, complete energy-related home repairs. And weatherize homes to make them more energy efficient. The funding announced today was included in fiscal year 2024 appropriations funding and the bipartisan infrastructure law. Policy actions taken during the crisis led to the most equitable recovery in recent history. The changes enacted under the American Rescue Plan Act helped millions of households. Received direct relief during the crisis, especially those most economically vulnerable. The plan expanded the child tax credit, earned income tax credit, and child independent care tax credit, all of which help reduce the child poverty rate. The legislation also lowered or eliminated insurance premiums of lower and middle income families, and offered full continuation of COBRA health benefits. Unemployment benefits were also extended, 
with a weekly supplement benefit of $300, in addition to the regular $400 benefit. The first $10,200 of those benefits were not taxed for folks earning less than $150,000. One measure of that resiliency is the unemployment rate. It took just 29 months for the overall unemployment rate to fall to its pre crisis low of 3.5%. During the crisis, the Biden administration also enacted policies. To help support housing stability, two programs were set in place the Emergency Rental Assistance Program, which provided $46 billion to support renters, and the Homeowner Assistance Fund, which made $10 billion available to support homeowners. So both of these programs were need based, so many underserved communities were able to benefit from the assistance. According to the Eviction Lab, crisis relief policies help cut eviction filings by more than half. But on the other hand, the Homeowner Assistance Fund program was designed to support existing homeowners to avoid delinquencies or the risk of foreclosure during the crisis. The Biden administration has announced a change that will save an estimated 850,000 home buyers. Primarily low and middle income and first time buyers, an average of $800 on home financing costs this year. It is part of an ongoing effort to address housing affordability challenges in the United States. Home financing costs have skyrocketed over the past year, with mortgage rates doubling from one year ago, at the same time that home prices have remained strong in many housing markets. This has priced out many would be home buyers who cannot qualify for a loan. For home buyers who have a good credit and can make a down payment above 10% of the home's price, FHA loans tend to be more expensive than conventional loans. But for home buyers struggling to enter the housing market, there are some loans like FHA that come with required mortgage insurance. The insurance lowers the risk for lenders to make a loan so that borrowers can qualify for a loan that they might not otherwise be able to receive. According to the administration, by lowering its annual mortgage insurance premium, it will help new home buyers all over the country achieve home ownership, which is currently the principal source of wealth creation for most American households. For example, the average home buyer in Maryland. Will save nearly $900 per year. Well, my magnificent and most marvelous friends, that is the end of my daily stimulus update video for today. My dearest friends, thank you very much for being part of this community. To say thank you and to show my appreciation, every Friday I will be announcing several winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you would like to enter these weekly giveaway friends, all you need to do is click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on, friends, the greater your chances of winning these giveaways. Thank you and have a wonderful and very blessed day.